you know, what's wrong with Congress? Well, why can't you guys get anything done? Are you, you dumb? You, you, you're lazy? You, you know, what is the deal? We believe there are certain structural problems that are ripping us apart and actually incentivizing this partisan behavior. And there's no incentives, actually, basically, to, to go to the middle and find some common ground. What incentivizes partisanship compared to what incentivizes bipartisanship? We looked at some very basic structural issues, gerrymandering being the primary one, that you have 90% of your seats that are super majority for one party or the other. Your pathway to re-election is simply by being a good partisan. The moment you begin to compromise, you begin to fail that strict partisanship test. If the only votes you compete for are those within your own party, it naturally is going to be a forcing function towards partisanship not towards bipartisanship. We have the worst campaign finance system in the modern world, no question about it. Its ability to infect decision making on members of Congress is significant and, and a, a significant hurdle to, uh, to a, a pure form of decision making. How do we unrig the system in a way that if you see members of Congress work together, there is a more viable pathway towards reelection? Bipartisanship is different than adopting an ideology where you have to be moderate. Being moderate is a choice of ideology. God bless you if you're moderate, conservative, progressive. You should, you should pursue that, that personal political interest. But how can we together create a platform where we get rewarded for progressives, moderates, and conservatives finding a path forward? We need political leaders willing to lose their job for a cause that the country believes in. What's going to happen is these seats become commodities of these special interest groups that under Citizens United are allowed to basically buy, sell, and trade your congressional seats. And it's what I realized members of Congress are spending 50% of their time raising money in a call and not doing their job studying issues. So my thought was let's limit the amount of time that you can actually fundraise. Pick a number, I don't care, eight weeks out from election day, 12 weeks out, go backwards, and then that's when you can start making those phone calls or your staff can or you know, however that works. That way 90, you know, 5% of your time you were focused on your job in that committee room, doing what you should be, studying and learning the issues. I would like to see a gerrymandering reform movement that said, we're gonna focus on geography, and as a secondary requirement, we're gonna focus on electoral competitiveness. And if we can do that, I think that would be a fundamental change to the United States Congress. We likely would not be talking about term limits ever again. Uh, about 90% of congressional districts are predetermined, right? Out of that 435, 90% will be Republican or will be Democratic. So if you're in a safe, say, Republican seat and you know, you're running for office, the only election that matters is the primary, right? You gotta win that primary. Guess what the average turnout is in a primary in a congressional race? It's like 15%, right? So if 15% of the country is determining 90% of your members of Congress. You target those 15%, you get elected to Congress. Now you're there and you wanna reach across the aisle and get something done, well, guess what? That'll probably be used against you because it's those same 15% that are going to be voting. Because every time there's a camera there, people start to put a little show on. And I've been in committee meetings where 10 members of Congress will ask Janet Yellen or whomever is there testifying the same exact question 10 times in a row. Like, what are they doing? This is like such a waste of time. We have really important things to talk about here. Well, they want that same clip with that really tough question to be played on their local TV station or put on their website or you know whatever it is. Why is it that there's such a push to repeal the Affordable Care Act, despite the fact it pulls very high? It's because the Chamber of Commerce and other groups want to see the repeal. And so the outside groups are moving, moving the puppet a lot.